Over the past two years, we've been converting our 1996 MCI D3 coach bus into a tiny home on wheels. We just moved into our bus, complete with running hot and cold water. Yeah. A Murphy bed, convertible couch, custom space for our cats. Oh, he's going in. Workspaces for ourselves. And a complete electrical and solar system so we can stay off grid in our upcoming travels. Now, if you've been watching our channel, you'll know that we don't normally go into too much technical detail. But as first time bus converters, we know just how daunting the electrical system can be. So we thought we'd make a few technical videos to share with you what we've learned over the past couple of years about solar, electrical, and off-grid living. I'm gonna break this video up into three different parts. First, I'm just gonna do a brief overview of our entire electrical and solar system. In the second part, we'll get into a little more details, and that way we can share each and every component we use for our system. And then in the third and final part, I'll give you some advice and things I wish I would have known when we first started to put together our solar and electric power for our bus. Now, one very important thing to think about before we dive in is when I talk about batteries, we talk about house batteries. And those are the batteries that power our living space, the house portion of the bus. Anytime I'm gonna reference the batteries for the automotive portion of the bus, we just call those the bus batteries. For a basic overview of our system, we have solar panels on top, which can take the sun's energy and charge up our house batteries. We also have a DC to DC converter, which can take the power from our bus's alternator and again, charge up our house batteries. In addition to that, we have shore power inputs. We have 150 amp and 130 amp and a little adapter for 15 amps. So we can plug in a normal household extension cord. 50 and 30 are pretty typical of what you'll find at RV parks. Whereas the 15 amp is more like an outlet you'll have around your house. Now the heart of our system is our Battleborn batteries. We've got three GC3 270 amp hour batteries. And it's really the key component to allow us to be off grid at all. To start off, we've got six 235 watt solar panels mounted on the roof of our bus. As the sun is captured by our solar panels, it comes down through our MPPT smart solar charge controllers. These are able to take the power from the solar panels and convert them to power that's compatible with our batteries. Now in our setup right now, we've got two of these MPPT smart solar charge controllers because we plan on putting another array of solar panels on the top of the bus in the not too distant future. On the way from our solar panels to our MPPT charge controllers, we've got an off on switch to quickly disconnect that voltage coming down from our solar panels and a fuse. So if there's ever any kind of problem up top, that power would come down and blow the fuse before it hits our charge controller. Continuing on from the solar charge controller, that energy that's compatible with our system goes on to our link distributor 1000 DC. Now this for us is acting as a fused bus bar. A bus bar acts as a junction box, letting us connect multiple components to it to both charge and distribute power to our system. Continuing to follow the power from our solar panels through our MPPT controller, through our Lynx distributor, which is acting as a bus bar, we'll head over to our batteries via an on-off switch. Having an on-off switch between our batteries and our Lynx distributor, which acts as our main bus bar, allows us to cut all power off from our batteries to the entire system. Now when we've got the bus turned on and we're driving down the road or idling, the bus's alternator is producing power that we can use as well. Our bus, our MCI D3, the alternator creates 240 watts of power. That's way more power than we'll ever need for our automotive electrical system. We've removed the bus's air conditioner, which is a huge power hog, and all the bus's native audio and video equipment. So all that power that's being created by our alternator, we're taking advantage of that to also charge our system by running it through our Orion DC to DC converter. At 
alternator creates energy for your vehicle's electrical system. R sends power to our DC converter to transform it into power that's compatible to our batteries. Our third source of getting power to the bus and to our batteries is with a shore power connections. Now, as I mentioned, this is what you'd find at an RV park, either a 50 amp service or 30 amp service, or we've got an adapter so that we can simply plug into a friend's garage with a standard household outlet to charge up our batteries on the bus. Now this is all thanks to our technology in our Victron 12 3000 120 inverter chargers. Our inverter chargers run at 12 volts with a maximum of 300 watts and are designed to distribute 120 amps. Multi-plus inverters are very important to our system for a couple reasons. Because our lithium ion batteries are DC power, all multi-pluses act as an inverter and convert that DC power from the battery into AC power, which is what you use inside your house. In the simplest terms, AC power is alternating current, meaning the voltage periodically changes from positive to negative, and negative to positive. With direct current, DC power, the direction of the current is constant and consistent. These things are so smart that you can send whatever amperage you want to them. It'll test to make sure the power's clean, recognize the amperage, and then check your system to see where we need to distribute that power to. So for instance, if we've got one air conditioner on and the batteries are pretty much charged up, it'll just send that power straight from the inputs of the shore power and send it on up to that air conditioner. But if, for example, our batteries were kind of low and we had an air conditioner on, it's gonna pull as much power as it can so that it can go ahead and run that air conditioner and use all the remaining power it can get to charge up the batteries. Now we have two inverter chargers so that we can balance the load across our household appliances. We've had no trouble running one air conditioner off one inverter charger and a second air conditioner off the other inverter charger. At the same time, we're powering an electric kettle or running a microwave. For our system, we've decided to use a standard household breaker box. I've seen a lot of people mount them underneath their bus in a luggage bay, but we wanted ours accessible in the house area and could easily troubleshoot it without having to come down and check out the luggage bay. Now we chose a square D breaker box and we've run one inverter to one side and the other inverter to the other side. We labeled our inverter chargers calling one red and one black. This way we could easily color code the circuits up in our circuit box as they alternate from red to black down the sides. And this allows us to easily balance power between the back and the front half of the living space of the bus. Now it's important to note here that wiring up all these components together can get a little tricky. We've got a complete blog post which will include a link to down below where we detail each and every wire, fuse, and on-off switch that we used. When you're wiring up your system, it's important to know how much amperage is going through those wires so you can plan ahead using a wiring chart and select the correct wire so it's capable of handling that much power. Now throughout our bus, we've used 12 volt lighting and 12 volt fans. Because these require only 12 volts, the power for these appliances don't need to be converted in our inverter chargers. We're routing them through a BGA-225. The BGA-225 senses the amount of charge left in the batteries and sends the power on to our house 12 volt appliances. For us, the most important function of the BGA-225 is that if our batteries drop down below a safe level, it'll disconnect so we don't drain the batteries too far and damage them. With the system wired up, we knew we wanted a way to monitor our battery level. This way we could tell if we're doing okay charge-wise, if we've got enough power to do the things we want to do. And this is where a battery monitor comes in handy. Coming directly off our battery bank, negative, we connected a BMV shunt, which communicates to a BMV 712 battery monitor. Shunt basically goes in there and measures how much power is coming in and out so it can keep a good idea of what your battery charge is. The shunt then communicates that information up to our battery monitor, which has a nice, easy digital display to tell us where our battery level is. 
Now that's not the only way we can monitor our components. Each and every one of our Victron electronic components has the ability to connect to your phone via Bluetooth. In the app, we can see what's going on with our solar charge controllers, our Orion DC to DC converter. We can check the battery monitor and control our inverters. But that's not all because we're using all the Victron electronics. All of those are connected via ethernet to a Serbo GX. It's like a central hub that will take all this information in and allows us to view what's going on with our system in a couple different ways. Our Serbo GX gets all the information for what's going on from all the components and then we're able to display that through a color LCD screen up in the bus and get an idea of what's going on with the system, how much power we're getting in, how much power you're using, how much charge we're getting from solar power or shore power. Now, as promised, we've reached the point in the video where I'm going to tell you things I wish I would have known, give us some advice on putting together your own system or preparing to build your own system. First thing is, physically building the system is much more complicated than it looks. If you're looking over different people's diagrams on their off-grid electric and solar system and it's starting to make sense, well that's great. You've taken a step in the right direction. But once you sit down to physically wire it together, you gotta deal with a lot of different obstacles. How you're gonna mount things, where they're gonna be, how you're gonna get everything to a central ground. For our system, we decided the best thing to do was put a board together that we could mount most of the components on and then connect them all from there. We did a mock-up on a table before we cut any holes or even put the mounting board into the bus and that helped quite a bit. Now the next thing I wish I would have thought about is that the longer you wait, the cheaper solar products seem to get. It's kind of more slaw. The technology advances quicker and quicker and quicker, and cost comes down when more people are purchasing those products. When we got our bus, one of the first things I was excited to do was run out and buy solar panels. We've got 235 watt solar panels, and I think I paid about as much as I could have bought 400 watt solar panels today. So if you're looking to put together a system, start getting an idea of what your budget is, and then when you're ready to put it together, that's when I recommend you purchase your components. Not only will you save some money, but there may be a better technology available at the last minute. And we were lucky enough to partner with Battleborn Batteries to put our system together. They helped walk us through the process after we measured what we thought our usage would be, and then put a plan together for what they recommended for our system. That was incredibly helpful, and I think they'll do that with you guys. Now, to be completely honest, we are affiliates with Battleborn, so if you purchase anything from our links below, we'll get a small commission, which helps us get on the road and stay on the road longer. That being said, when I estimated our usage, I probably should have added an overage of estimating our usage. I'd recommend after you get your measurements for what power you think you'll be using, add 20% at 25%. And the reason being is because you'll want to be able to get out off-grid and stay out longer than you probably imagine. For us, we never planned on staying in places where it was extremely hot or extremely cold. But over the last month here, we've been in the Midwest finishing up little bits of our bus conversion and we've had record heat. This means we've had to run both of our air conditioners, sometimes up to 18 hours a day which we did not budget for in our original power usage plan. So I recommend not only do you, you know, put a little buffer in there of overage for your estimate, but also plan for the future if you think you'd ever like to grow. In our system, we have three GC3 Battleborn 270 amp hour batteries. This gives us a total of 810 amp hours, which is quite a bit of power, but when we were putting them all in, I thought, just in case, we need more. I've got spots for three more batteries. So if you think maybe you might want more solar, leave a space for another solar charge controller. And if you think maybe you might need more batteries down the line, make sure you leave that physical space so you have a place to put that new equipment when you're ready to grow. Now this last piece of advice is the most important thing I can tell you, which is be safe and work with an electrician. 
Electricity can not only be dangerous, it can be deadly if you cross the wrong wires. We were fortunate enough to work with my dad. He's a retired electronic technician. He understands energy. He's been wiring things up for the Federal Aviation Commission for decades. Working in our bus, there were some learning curves about this kind of system, but he had the basic knowledge and foundation for working with electricity in a safe manner, and he passed all of that knowledge on to me. If you can't work with an electrician, find someone that's done this at least a few times before. Being able to build your own off-grid system is wonderful, but you've got to be safe and stay alive so you can enjoy it later. I hope this video has been entertaining and more importantly helpful because I'm putting this video out there for myself in the past because this is exactly the kind of thing I wish I could have found three years ago when we started our building our electric system. Thanks for watching the video. Comment below if you have any questions and we'll see you on the next one.